glad you all made it here this evening. Um, this is a really great workshop, a great way to find out more about home accessibility and things that take into consideration when you're thinking about home modifications to make uh, things a little easier to get around in your home. Uh, I think everyone knows me, but in case anyone doesn't or has forgotten who I am, I'm Linda Kern and I'm a social worker and uh, patient services coordinator here at ALS of Michigan. And my co-worker Judy Fortuna, who's also a patient services coordinator here at ALS of Michigan. And um, wanted to uh, let you know that uh, there are um, packets and more information by the door on your way out if there's more information that you'd like. There's some articles and some additional information about resources and funding uh, opportunities and things like that uh, for uh, home modifications. Um, uh, who I'd like to introduce you to this evening, who's going to be telling you much, much more, is Luis Rios. He is the owner of Bath for All. Uh, it's a business uh, been around for 15 years now. And uh, you said that you told me earlier that they started off with just um, doing bathroom modifications. And now they do it all. And I would like to turn it over to you for your presentation. Hello, how are you? Good. I cannot do anything with my accent, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the event. My name is Luis Rios. I am a co-owner. My wife is my business partner. We own BFA. As you guys, uh, we are a specialist family. I was not my plan as a professional to move to Michigan and to work with people with disabilities. My plan was to be an engineer and drive an Audi. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a daughter with a special needs. And we have to move to Michigan, change our life. That's happened to many families with loved ones with a special needs. Uh, 15 years ago, we, we discovered ourselves that was a need for companies that will work with a barrier-free work. Most of the contractors will work only with insurance work. We decided to open a company to work with private, what we call private customers, just regular people who just needed at that time was custom bathrooms. Okay, uh, means that we just decided to open our business. My wife took the chance and decided to work with me. Uh, I used to work as an engineer. My wife is a designer. And suddenly she became an accountant, marketing, website <laughs> person. And I became a salesman and technician. Uh, we are a licensed builder in the state of Michigan. We are insured. And we are CAP certified, and we are certified by the Department of Defense. We do work for the VA hospital, too. Okay? Uh, a good uh, something about our company in the last 15 years, we never have a complaint to our license or a claim to our insurance. Okay? In the, so far, we have been. Less. Uh, today we want to talk to you guys about home modification, but specifically for families with ALS, people with ALS, uh, because uh, every every uh, condition have different needs. We have uh, noticed in Michigan it's a very high concentration of people with ALS, people with MS, and we know that many conditions need different uh, approaches. Means that we decided to make this little PowerPoint presentation for you that you guys will have the basic guidelines for home modifications. How you start? The best way to start a project is to have a loved one, a family member with you. 
Don't go there crazy, hire a contractor, because the contractor might have a good intentions, because there's no doubt about that. But it's always to, to have a loved one with you, because you need to ask questions. And sometimes the family is in distress and don't make the right decisions. Many people with ALS pay with their own resources. It means that you have to be very careful how you expense those resources. It means a family member, friends, uh, be sure that when you choose a contractor, is many good contractors in Michigan, uh, be sure that at least he have a license, he have his insurance, and you have a quote that, you know, he will write a quote for you. Every contractor have a different way to do his quotes. Means that doesn't mean that one guy is hiding one thing or the other. It's just uh, we all have different ways to do a proposal. Okay? Um, how you start the project is you do a home evaluation. If the contractor is experienced, contractor doing barrier free job, or what uh, many people will call ADA or barrier free. You will call this contractor, the, any contractor will be able to take a look to the house. In many cases, families send us pictures through the internet. And just with pictures, I can do a three-dimensional design and have an idea of the cost. Means that the contractor will just uh, explain you what he can do. You have to let the contractor know your concerns. And if the contractor have a lot of experience, he will be able to show you pictures of the similar project. And it's usually a, a guess about the price. I always ask the families, do you have a budget? Many people do not like to talk about budgets. But it's very important for you to have a budget for any project. Because when you go to buy a car, your budget might be $20,000. Some people have a $100,000 budget for the car. Means that when you do a home remodeling, will be always good to know how much do you want to spend. Because the builder will tell you what you, you will need, OK? <coughs> Means that. We, we know some basic areas that family with ALS should approach. And the, the main area is the access to the house. Access to the house will be using a ramp. The ramp can be built, aluminum, wood, permanent, removable. Uh, some companies even offer rental. We do not offer, offer uh, rental of ramps. Or if the house uh, is a ramp, is not an option, we will install a vertical lift. Is a, I will show you a picture. This is uh, one example. This is a little house. I think it's in Romulus, Michigan. From the floor to the decking is 36 inches. That will be a giant ramp because in this case the city will take the whole front of the house and the cost of that ramp will be higher than installing a lift. Is that in that little house we just did a porch, a steps, a lift. It's all accessible. Okay? The other options you have ramps. Ramps are built of wood or something called tech synthetic material, modular aluminum, or if you have just a little step, you can use a little transition ramp. I prefer to build ramps inside garage. That's my the area that I like due to Michigan weather. Is the ramp is in the garage, you can transfer inside the garage. Sadly, when you have a ramp outside, get attention of 
everybody. It's like letting everybody know we have a person here in the wheelchair. Means that it's better to have the ramp inside the garage is possible. It's not, it's you have to go in the front of the house. Something very important. Every single city in the state of Michigan have different approaches to ramp. You know, it's the same code book, everybody has different rules. Means that uh, even now for aluminum ramps, some city want permits. Six, seven years ago, that was not an issue. Now an arbor has a $250 permit fee for an aluminum ramp. Means that uh, it's something that the contractor should know the rules in the in the city that you are working. When you are inside the house, that is the most important part, some people have two-story houses. Might be possible it's a newer house. Upstairs you might have a master bedroom, might have a shower, might have everything there, your living room. This piece of equipment is called an incline lift. Okay, that will get you in the wheelchair to the second floor. It's a piece of equipment that I only recommend if everything is set upstairs. If you already have your open concept bathroom, you have your room, you buy this piece of equipment. It's downstairs might be the best option. Do not buy that piece of equipment because that's a $14,000 piece of equipment that you have to be sure you will use it. It's not, it's not a best piece of equipment. Means that this is a second lift. This one, the difference between this one and the other one, this one have a thousand pounds load capacity. Okay? Means that this will be your stairway access. Means that you are inside the house, the second area of concern will be the bathroom. I think that's everybody agree that the bathroom is a, is a main area there. Yeah. Means that uh, usually okay. for families with ALS, we recommend a rolling shower, rolling sink. If you have a small bathroom and you have what we call a wet floor design, most of the people can turn the wheelchairs and work without have to be moving walls, adding to the house. Means that all of these pictures are pictures in very small spaces. The standard house bathroom. Even this one here, you might not see there, but that's a wall mount toilet inside the shower. That was designed by a barrier free architect that we was able in that little condo to have the turn radios, have the toilet, the shower. Of course, the toilet get wet, but no matter what, it's all sealed. Means that you can see here different options for small spaces. This is a bigger bathroom. Again, it's all roll under. As you can see, it looks nice, do not look like a hospital. <coughs> and this one is a bit bigger, this picture, because this is a bathroom with the requirements for the federal government. It means that it's, it's a bit different than other bathrooms. Something that I want you to know that ADA, I don't know if you have here something called ADA, American for Disability Act, that do not apply for residential applications is that ADA is only for commercial use buildings, okay? Means that cities will not apply ADA for jobs done in your house, okay? That's very important. Even the ramps do not require to be ADA, the slope. If you don't have enough space, it's a little consideration in the state of Michigan disability book. But as you can see, that one will exceed the ADA requirements. But main element here, grab bar, you don't need that many grab bars. This is designed for a shower wheelchair, 
I don't know if you guys have seen one of those, but it's just a regular wheelchair, but it's a stainless steel. I will not get rusty. Handheld shower and a faucet with thermal control that you do not get burned. <coughs> but that will be the standard e uh, applications for the bathrooms. You don't need a lot of equipment. You have enough to take a shower for the hallways. Many the requirement in the state of Michigan and uh, for many of the new wheelchairs, the doorway don't have to be 36. Usually you put a 36 inches door, is the hallway is 36, 38. If you don't have a wide hallway, you, uh, you use a 36 inches door and you can make a turn. But the cities for handicap applications require only a 32 inches door. Sometimes with these hinges that you can get in Lowe's now, I think it's uh, eight ten bucks, these up hinges, you are able to widen the door enough that you can get your wheelchair. Remember, just have to be functional for you. Uh, in some cases, we will have wider doors. It's just uh, the customer want that look, okay? Equipment. You already saw the vertical lift, you saw the incline lift. This is a piece of equipment that you might want to consider. This is called a ceiling lift. Most of the caregivers get hurt transferring the patient. Uh, sometimes you cannot afford your wife or your husband to get hurt. Means that this is a piece of equipment that is uh, very functional, is reliable. Come with different applications. This is specific one in this house is called a semi-permanent unit. It's a hospital lift, hospital quality, made by a company called Arjo. The difference is that can be removed. You can move the unit from the living room to, this one will be located once she moves, this one will be located in the basement. Means that this is a unit that is independent from the structure of the house. It's the same <coughs> unit, the same lift that come with four functions, you can have a permanent track that will take you from your bedroom to, to the bathroom anywhere in the house. As you can see this picture here, the master bathroom is open, it's no wall. And take her straight to the bed. Means that this is different applications for ceiling lift. The ceiling lift, the unit here, go to the charger and you don't have to charge the unit. The unit is a smart unit, do everything. And it's another unit that is a smaller unit. That is a small unit, it's still 350 pounds capacity, and you can locate this unit anywhere in the house. If you go, let's say, to Florida, you fold the unit, put it in your car, and take it. The only difference is that this unit is a two function, means that you have to push the patient. And after you use it, you have to remove it from the hook and you have to charge it. Because this one is not automatic. It's very functional. And again, if you travel, if you have limited space. But it's very, the most important part of the ceiling lift is that most of the people have a small rooms. Not everybody have a master bedroom that is uh, 14 by 20. The ceiling, the ceiling lift keep your open floor and you can transfer. Uh, I don't know if you have seen the floor lift. People that use floor lift sometimes cannot transfer the patient because it's not enough room. Means that the ceiling lift maximize the use of the space in your house. Means that it's a unit to consider. Bedrooms, 
Sometimes people, if you have a nice master bedroom downstairs, you are lucky. Most of the people have the master room upstairs. The staircase is difficult to work. Means that one of the options that we have for that is we use a lot of living rooms. We, we use a lot of uh, family rooms as permanent rooms. Uh, now you can get these uh, partition walls in IKEA. They have uh, many of them. Uh, you can just close the living room and make the living room a private place. And you can have your ceiling lift there. You can have your accessible bathroom downstairs without have to make a addition to the house. I don't like to do additions because additions uh, is a long process, it's, uh, it's an expensive process. You have to go through an architect, through the city, and sometimes the family <coughs> do not want to go through the whole you know, process of a big addition. Means that, uh, I will recommend you to just make your living room or family room a living space and that will be perfect. Floors. Floors is a big issue too. If you have carpets with thick padding in the room that you do the transfer, try to, if possible, to replace it for an engineer even a laminate. Carbonized uh, bamboo is excellent because it's a very hard bamboo, do not get scratched, and it's water resistant. Uh, tile is a good idea, but it's far more expensive. Means that uh, if you can just replace the carpet for a laminate floor, will make a big difference. Uh, when you transfer the patient, at least in the living space, because this is where you made the transition from bed to wheelchair or from bed to shower wheelchair. Means that uh, flooring is, uh, is a good option and it's not that expensive. Okay? This is one example of flooring. Okay? By the way, this is a wheelchair accessible kitchen. But uh, I, I don't think that this is excellent for anybody with disabilities, but it's, it will be something you don't really have to invest. Is the budget that allowed you is something to consider, but a kitchen remodeling is not a essential part for us. Means that I think she's going to show you a video of, I, I think it's a ceiling lift project here in Southfield. And you will be able to see the bathroom that is in the, in the same project. That lifter will go from the bedroom to the master room. You can see the unit, the charging unit. The lift is attached to the structure of the house. And you can see there are open, composite, wet floor. This one have a jacuzzi, but uh, was a requirement by the judge. Means that you can see here a picture, and you can see the whole composite of an open floor bathroom. You can see the opening from the ceiling it's no option, you have to do that. At the same time, when you consider to have a ceiling lift, you don't need the ceiling lift to go from the bed to the bathroom. You know, it's a, you just need the ceiling lift in the area that you transfer. Mm. Most of the people do not take a shower and go to the bed hanging on the lift. That is not that function. Huh? You can see in that specific application, because we use the lift to lower the person to the jacuzzi top. Means the person stays in the slim when 
take the bath. That's why I go there. But I just with the cross section lift, that will be enough to make the tram ferry. Means that you was able to see there a real view of a job. Mm -hmm. Means that uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys have some questions. I'll start. <laughs> so um, let's assume I want a bathroom remodeled, but really all I want is to change my bathtub to a roll-in shower mm -hmm. to save on money because mm -hmm. I can't afford yeah. a complete remodel. What is involved in that? I know obviously you have to take out the tub, but do you have to change the floor for pitch so the water doesn't run out all over? And you know what what is involved there? Again, it all depends the family budget. Uh, they sell uh, molded rolling showers mm -hmm. that are a standard 30 by 60 with a flexible threshold. They are functional. Uh, is that what the budget allowed? They are excellent, but you usually you will need a tower on the floor because they are only, even that 30 inches is the federal government requirements. That's not enough for a caregiver and the person in the wheelchair. But uh, you know, if you, that's what the budget allowed, you just put a tower in the floor. I have, my two bathrooms in my house are wheelchair accessible because of my daughter. Usually my other daughters make more mess than when we <laughs> shower my daughter in the wheelchair. Means that uh, it all depends on uh, how careful the person is. If the bathroom is very small, sometimes I recommend to have the wet floor design that you can maximize the, the space. <coughs> because uh, sometimes moving walls, extending walls become very expensive. And uh, one of the options out there, we don't have a picture, sometimes we use the, the cold closet downstairs, we, we get rid of the cold closet and that become the rolling shower. And because usually the powder room is a small, instead to use a regular toilet, we use what they call a European toilet. That is a wall mount toilet. The tank of the toilet is inside the wall. The toilet is suspended, and you gain 12 inches of a space. Means that toilet, is, that toilet install might be $1,800 because require a lot of work. But if you need to move a wall, sometimes that becomes thousands of dollars. Means that it's a lot of options in the market to have a space functional. You want the space to be functional. <coughs> you don't want the space to be ADA if you don't have to. Is there minimum dimensions for the bathroom just to make for the wheelchair turning and uh, usually a standard five by eight bathroom can you can design the bathroom to be wheelchair accessible because most of the wheelchairs are 28 inches width and most of the patients with ALS they use uh, in, they will use uh, manual wheelchairs in the bathroom. You don't want to use electric wheelchairs to transfer inside the, the bathroom. Do you know how much something would, how much it would cost? Usually the cost of the bathroom remodeling will be from $7,500 to $40,000. All depends on uh, you know, how big is the bathroom, how uh, materials and finishes. <coughs> that, uh, all depends on uh, the budget of the family. 
what it costs seventy five hundred and we just do not the best of and put it in the rolling shower. Mm -hmm. That yeah. that would be the bottom line. Mm -hmm. right. That that's will make it uh that's you will be able to have a molded shower. Usually a, a skid safe floor and a standard handheld shower, just something that is functional and work. Means that it's a seventy seventy five hundred dollars is a is a tight budget for a bathroom remodeling. Oh, okay. From there is a, the average that we have seen out there. It's about twelve thousand. You know, usually that's usually when the person pick their tile finishes, the toilets, uh, uh, something mm. else that I didn't mention to you that now you can even get in Costco. It's called a bidet toilet seat. In most of our bathrooms now. Every single customer is asking for that. Uh, it's a extremely good piece of equipment. I know that BDA is something that you guys don't use in this part of the U.S., but BDA is very common in, in Europe and, and in the Caribbean. Uh, this new one is excellent. Was, uh, I think Costco have one unit for like 400 bucks. The unit will watch you, will warm the water, will watch you, and will dry you. Uh, my customers swear that it's good, that work. Means that it's uh, just need a regular plug close to the, the toilet. For power, it's a very low voltage, means that you can jump from any outlet around, just put a GFI. Uh, the one from, in this case from Costco, uh, come with all of the adapters that you can connect, and come with the wireless remove <coughs> control. Means that is the pa patient cannot control, any member of the family can just push the setting is that uh, don't forget that piece of equipment because so, it's excellent. So for the, for the water to be warm, does it come with like its own heater? Or how yes, it it's, a, it's a heat element inside the seat okay. where the water goes. Because you say, you say the water that it is used is just a little bit because it's only to watch you. Right. Because uh, the toilet flush with the standard uh, mechanism from the toilet means that you can even do the setting of how hot you want the water and even you can have the setting of how far you want the jet to go and cleanse you. And uh, the new one that you might have, a, you know, it's a concern that I used to have, the, you, the new one comes with the sensor that if you are not sitting, the unit will not work. For those who have little kids around, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's possible. You don't want this thing to activate and just spray water everywhere. Now have that w uh, sensor that don't allow that. Means that uh, it's something to consider. I tell people Costco, but you can get it anywhere. But uh, the one, it's uh, not the whole toilet, it's just the seat? It's just the seat. Okay. You can get the smart toilet. It's what is called the smart toilet. We have installed a couple of them. I don't think it's a good investment because it's like a $2,500 toilet and it's a bidet toilet seat with a fancy toilet. <laughs> it's, it's not much, you know. Means that I recommend the customers to do not uh, spend the money in the smart toilet. Other that the smart toilet open the seat when you are getting close and close the seat. If you can live without that function, don't spend uh, two, three thousand dollars in the toilet. It's a very high number for, for a toilet, no? In connect with a ramp permit, I know we had a ramp for it recently. 
gun and turn on our bill. At least in Georgia, a permit is needed if it's permanent, if it's temporary, no permit is needed. Mm -hmm. So that would be something to check, check into a trial for us. Yeah, every city is different. One example will be Romulus, Michigan. Romulus will require you to go and pull the permit, but they will <coughs> not charge you for aluminum one. They just want, they will send an inspector to be sure the wrap <coughs> is safe. Because uh, as you have seen, some people do some crazy things out there. <laughs> Means that, uh, the city of Southfield, you need to put a permit even for parking the customer house. <laughs> in the city of Southfield is, uh, the city of Plymouth, you don't have to worry. An arbor, don't even try. Just <laughs> go to the city or you will get a fine. <coughs> in that every, every city is, uh, <coughs> it is different. Means that, uh, the best way is the contractor should always call. Uh, most of the contractors that work in this area, they should know how every city works. Means that it's, uh, usually the contractor should not be surprised if the inspector show because uh, they should know the area. Something that I didn't mention to you, the law changed last year for chair lifts vertical lift and incline lift, the law in Michigan change. Means that now we used to, I still use a, a licensed elevator contractor to install my elevator equipment. The vertical lift is considered in the US an elevator. The incline one that you saw is an elevator and the chair lift is being considered an elevator. Until last year, you were supposed to go to Lansing and pull the permits. And the equipment was supposed to be installed by a licensed person. The law has changed, means that now it's different requirements. That you do not pull the permit any longer, but some cities like Rochester Hills require a permit. The city sent their inspectors. Other cities like Plymouth, they will tell you I don't have anything to do with that. Means that uh, is uh, every city have a different approach. I believe that Detroit has their own inspection department. <coughs> I do not work in Detroit in the commercial area. Means that, uh, but I have friends that work there and they told me Detroit have very strong inspections out there. Do you know why uh, we got a quote concerning a, a stair lift? Mm -hmm. uh, because our stairs have a turn in, turn in it, it cost $9,000. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, and one of the straight run, how much would it be? $2,900 will be the price for a premium chair lift. I do not recommend families with ALS to spend money in chair lifts. That's, a, that's money you can spend in other areas. Uh, because the problem with the chair lift is the chair lift needs you to be able to transfer uh, ALS and MS, sometimes you feel good, sometimes you don't feel that good, and sometimes you have to move downstairs and have your bed relocated downstairs, everything, and you have a piece of equipment that $9,000 will be like a good, good, good deal, but I have seen some of these units that cost $22,000, $23,000. The cost of one that we sell is $16,000. Means that that's a lot of money. Also keep in mind, I don't mean uh -huh. to step on your toes, but a lot of our families have bought a stair lift, not like the one they showed here where you actually put the wheelchair on it and it goes up, but one you sit in. 
And while it may be functional for a while, if you use trunk control, <coughs> it's, you're not going to be able to sit up straight. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, people get, you know, it's, uh, it, it's very sad to have a piece of equipment, three, six, seven thousand dollars sitting there. And the curb unit cannot be used anywhere else. You own it. Do not, cannot be retrofitted anywhere else. It's something that you have to know. What about uh, as far as grab bars, like to support a grab bar? Is there a certain um, you know dimension of wood that you need behind it? Is the standard two by four good enough? Usually, when uh, when you do the the full bathroom remodeling, uh, the series will check for something called blocking. Should be at I usually use a two by eight, but I will guess a two by six should be enough. But uh, you want to have, uh, if, if you are remodeling the whole bathroom, I recommend to have blocking in the whole bathroom area that you can put grab bars, equipment. So all the way around mm -hmm. at, at the proper height. Yeah, you, you use the blocking to attach the suspended sink. Means that it's very function, e, uh, functional, even to put uh, uh, tower bars. Uh, many, many of my customers with ALS, we add a backup heater to the bathroom in case they feel that it's too cold. Means that uh, this is some of the, <coughs> the elements of the bathroom, but blocking at least should be in the whole shower and the city will check for that. Remember, some. Uh, when you have like a little remodeling, sometimes you can get away without uh, pulling permits when it's something like a, something a small equipment, but when you have a, a project that requires removing plumbing, removing everything, the cities require inspections and everything. Means that the average bathroom remodeling is taking now three weeks. Three weeks in the winter, in the summer, in the city of Ann Arbor is taking up to two months. Okay, it's something that you have to think ahead. Means that the best time to to do your remodeling project should be before May. When May comes, the city get very, very busy. And some, most of the cities do not, uh, do not move, uh, especially jobs ahead. You need to just get in the list. Means that that would be good to advocate for that with the state of Michigan that the cities are required to provide uh, fast inspections for uh, disability work. You, you mentioned three weeks, you know, the shortest time. Is that, can, can did that start to finish? Mm -hmm. so can you get a functioning bathroom quicker than that? Like, for instance, our situation, we have one bathroom on, mm -hmm. on the main floor. So if that goes down, you know, for three weeks, I think we're in a hotel or something. <laughs> <laughs> right? But this is a, it it's all depends the, the amount of work. Okay. Okay, it all depends the amount of work. Uh, we just finished a six by 14 foot wheelchair accessible bathroom in Lettington in eight days. From scratch, was nothing there, okay? But at the same time, uh, when I went to ask for the permit, everybody looked at me like, what? <laughs> I said, like, okay, means that. We just did the whole project without permit. Of course, we have to follow. We follow every single rule, and we we usually take pictures when the customer want a job for whatever reasons with no permits. Uh, most of them are due to taxes. Uh, we take pictures and keep the record just to to be safe. But. Uh, we will when the, we will 
in this a case like that, I will go and talk to the city, to the building director. I will explain him the situation. And most of the building directors, which, uh, they will even go uh, and do the inspection themselves. When he said, I think the only department will be, I think, Grand Rapids and Ann Arbor is, uh, is some union rules that don't allow them. But most of the normal uh, cities, they, they will be able to, you know, you finish one thing, the guy will be in the morning there, and you can continue. But that's will. I usually ask the family member to talk to a building director and just let them know, and they will work with you. Okay. Usually they don't work with the builders. <laughs> because uh, they might think you just try to just uh, pull an easy one of them, is that uh, we as a family. And I would suggest going there and talking mm -hmm. to them face to face uh -huh. as opposed on the phone. Mm -hmm. Because it's harder for them to say no to somebody uh -huh. they're looking at. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's important, uh, and I told you I have, we have been, uh, we do, we do sometimes uh, repairs for insurance companies. We get called to redo the jobs, and we have been in jobs that have taken three months, and they are not finished. And when you go to the house, everybody is on <laughs> fire, you know, yeah. so just, uh, at the same time, you can prepare temporary areas. They even have showers that you can set in one area. Is that uh, it's, it, but it's tough. It's, you only have one bathroom downstairs. It's always it's always difficult. Thank you. So for for a I mean a standard bathroom, we just moved into a one story on on a slab. Um, so we just have a tile bathroom with standard tub. Mm -hmm. So if you were to rip out the tub and tile that so it could be all mm -hmm. tile. Do you typically have to lower the drain and dig into the concrete, or is it you can almost work with what's there? If you are on the slab, we use a different application. Now they have all these modified cement products. What we will do is we will hand slope the floor okay. with a modified cement is that that is a special cement that allows you up to a quarter inch thick layers. Okay, you have to use that. And they have something that is called membranes. Means that what we do is we just build a swimming pool and we tile over that. And that's the way that usually a hospital like Bowman will build their bathrooms means that that's the application that we use in slabs. Because slabs have the tendency to, to crack. Okay. But uh, other than that, just work perfect. Uh, you have any idea what an average cost, just to rip out of the tub and do what you just said would be? Well, is you have to rip up the, the, just the top area, mm -hmm. that, that's very inexpensive. That would be like forty-five, five thousand dollars $5,000, the whole shower area. But if you want to do the whole bathroom and slope the whole thing, something that you can do is you can send us a picture of your bathroom to our website, and I can just uh, just with the picture I can put I have a I have a software that I can do any design from a picture. Uh, in most of our customers, we will show them how the bathroom will look finished in the three-dimensional real view drawing. Means that you see the wheelchair there, you see the wheelchair turning, you see the person standing, and that's, uh, that help a lot because it's easy for the person to visualize. They see how it's going to look. Because most of the people are scared that it looks like a hospital. And you don't want that, you know? Means that what used to be called handicap jobs, now it's called open concept. That's how everybody calls now. Now if you have a ranch house with the open concept, it's easy to sell. 
Now everybody's looking. You are lucky you found a ranch house. Yeah. It took me five years to find my ranch. Yeah. Hey, but send us the picture, and I can just uh, <coughs> send you different options, and that's, uh, that's very simple. Okay? If you are on the slab, most of the time, where the drain is, it's a square hole. And you just lower the drain there. Means that uh, that's how it's usually done. If you take a look to the service door, you will see the the opening. Okay. Any question on any on costs, or were you wondering on how much something, how long something takes? Is anybody here better? If you are a veteran with ALS, uh, is uh, they have a lot of grants. Uh, they have up to a seventy thousand dollar grant. We we are certified through the veteran uh, hospital. It's a lot of paperwork, yeah. but uh, it's uh, it's a lot of. Uh, resources for veterans with ALS. But of course, you have to go to the VA hospital and, mm -hmm. and deal with the, whatever the, I haven't been involved <laughs> in the paperwork in the hospital, but uh, we have one person that just do paperwork for uh, veteran uh, affair jobs. In, in your company, you have one person? Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. It took two weeks to <laughs> fill the application to be a contractor and took a year to be approved. One of the questions was is we sell weapons to Iran. If you are a veteran, you can, uh, they have these resources. They have from a six thousand dollar grant to a, I think it's a, 70. to the seventy. But yeah. uh, people that with ALS qualify for the grant. I mean, most people put um, seats in the shower, or do they just leave it open because you're gonna simply shower in a wheelchair, or? But we we block always for the bench, we offer the bench to every customer. A folding commercial bench is $500. Means that uh, usually as part of the package, we offer that to the customers. Uh, it's, uh, the chair is very functional. You can use it. It's, you know, you put the grab bars in the right place. Uh, we use something called a flip bar that help to keep the person stable on the bench. Uh, ma many people like the bench, but uh, we always block. Even if the customer don't want it at the moment, we will, mm -hmm. you know, it's ready. You just drill the holes and, and use it. And, uh, but it might also be functional for if someone has to get in the shower with them, or if you want to use the shower without them in there, you can use it to sit mm -hmm. down on, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it has more than one purpose. Yeah. <laughs> it works. Uh, one example, I, my daughter is 22 years, she has cerebral palsy, she's totally dependent. And she loves to sit in that chair, mm -hmm. we turn on the shower head and the handheld shower at the same time, and she just have, that's her part of the day that she loved the most. Means that it works. Means that, that that's a good element of a design. I guess, you know. it, I guess it depends on how, uh, how, how you are in that day. We, we have both. We have the folding bench okay. and we have the shower chair. The shower. Sometimes she can be she have uh, that that strong support that right. day, and she can sit over there, and she can just hey. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just need that she's in the mm -hmm. shower because you need to clean her better mm -hmm. or something, and then so you just fold. Okay. 
the bench and then you just have all the space with the shower right. chair and you incline or you know it depends of whatever they use or if you're alone if you have a caregiver with you but keep in mind that using the bench requires another transfer so mm -hmm. if they're totally dependent on you for transferring mm -hmm. can help you that's an additional two yeah. transfers actually mm -hmm. one to the bench and one off of the bench mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, you know, you just have to, it depends on where they're at in the disease exactly. process, exactly. really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, uh, I tell my customers, uh, I have a lot of uh, seniors. My company wasn't designed, I thought that I was going to work with kids. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, when uh, I discovered MS and ALS, and that became our main customer, means that I don't, I only do kids when it's a trust and it's, it's by the court. Is that we get hired by the court to do the, the jobs usually. But uh, most of our customers are MS and ALS. The biggest thing that we see out there is they wait until they have an accident. And I will tell you something, when you have a broken hip, <coughs> broken leg, was not savings. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's very important that uh, you consider the b at least the basic. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of good contractors, uh, very capable. It's, uh, people have family members. You know, it's a lot of resources now with the internet and YouTube. <laughs> oh my God, you can't do anything. <laughs> Means that uh, no matter who do your job, don't wait until you have an accident. Because uh, something that I believe that most of you haven't checked is a cost of a 24 hour care nursing home. Did you guys know the price mm -hmm. of nursing home in these neighborhoods here? $60,000. You go from 6500 to $12,000. And some of them will freeze your assets and your bank accounts before you go there. Means that it's very important to do the basics with the contractor, with the friends, with the voluntary group, because it's a lot of organizations that works too. But, uh, you know, at, at least the ramp is very important. Uh, don't try to go through those steps just because you feel good. You know, you have a snow, you have ice. Now this is the, we call this the rub season. It's, a, it's, being a, it's being a bit delayed because this beautiful weather. But very soon we will have the cold. Mom is in a nursing home. We need a run to discharge her. And it's... Uh, 10 degrees outside, and you need to install an aluminum ramp. It's, a, it's very important to sit down with a loved one and do your, you know, your planning and your budgeting like everybody else, and just uh, get this this thing done. Do you just do retrofitting, or do you work with builders who are doing your uh, we work with developers and builders, okay? Most of the developers right now do not want to change many things in new houses for people with uh, disabilities. Right now we have a big developer in Rochester Hills that he do not want to change the foundation to have a zero threshold garage means that he will build a house, but he wants to build a ramp in the garage. If you are building a ranch house, no, why you need a ramp? Uh, many contractors hire us for elevators and equipment, but uh, developers usually don't want to, to change because it's, it's a booming in construction right now means that why go through the hassle to deal with the modified home 
when you sell the same house for four hundred thousand dollars without headaches. We just have, we show you the the lift that will be removed to the basement. They sold her lot. She bought a lot for her house, and the developer just sold the lot to somebody else and gave her back the money. Mm -hmm. I thought that was illegal, but no. Just because he don't want to grow through the modifications, all of the issues, and this and that, means that it's a, uh, it's, it's, uh, I have seen it's tough for some families. But uh, I will guess should be a lot of developers and new builders willing to, to take a challenge. What have you seen people do with uh, as far as doors into the bathroom, just to eliminate, make it easier to close? Do you go with a, a pocket door, or what do people do? Well, right now we are installing uh, quite a few. So uh, it's called uh, barn doors. Yeah. They, outside and outside. they are extremely functional because. My problem with pocket doors is that where the pocket is have to be clear. Means that if it's a remodeling, you have to move a lot of wiring. That's become expensive. You cannot put grab bars. You cannot put outlets. Means that those barn doors that look extremely cute and nice are super functional for areas that you want privacy. The other option is this uh, partition curtains that uh, IKEA sell. Those works pretty good. Or it's not a requirement to have a wall in your master bathroom. Means that you can have an open master bathroom <coughs> and just use it. Means that it's uh, it's many houses that are new, the new architects designs, the master room is just open. It's all open, means that it's a, it's a concept that I recommend to many, pe many people to use, but it's not the barn door will be uh, better than the pocket door. You can get a barn door kit, door and hardware in Home Depot for like 400 bucks. Is that is uh, the prices are coming down for those. Now, what exactly is a barn door? What? What is a barn door? The barn door is a pocket door. The door slide inside the wall, no? Yeah. But the pocket door have a pocket. Means that it's a the same thickness of the door is inside the pocket that hides inside the wall. Right now, if I have a pocket door here, this switch cannot be here. You might have mechanical work. You might have gas. The pocket door, barn, the, barn the barn door, door have a hardware exposed and you slide the door to the outside, okay? And you don't need to do any changes. Here. Yeah, it would be laying on the outside mm -hmm. of the frame, correct? Mm -hmm. They show it on HDTV all the time. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah, They're they, beautiful. Yeah, means that they, they, they work. They, I have seen the ha just the hardware. Some people pay two three thousand dollars just for the hardware. Mm -hmm. They can be very beautiful, but uh, Home Depot and Lowe's have a very nice kit. Means that it's, uh, I recommend the families to browse in Home Depot and Lowe's because, uh, oh yes, you can go there. Uh, she's in charge of that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. It's, uh, uh, when you spend your time, I, you know, sometimes we go a lot to Home Depot and Lowe's, you will be amazed of all of technology. You have uh, door locks that can be opened by your cell phone. That if somebody is, or you have a ring bell that somebody is there, goes to your cell phone. Uh, wireless 
switches. Means that is you, your bed is here and your own off switch is here. Now you can buy a switch that work wireless to another switch that you can have next to your bed. And you can turn on and off the light, dimmer the lights. And it's a $60 switch. But you know how much the electrician charge you for running a three-way switch? <laughs> Means that it's a, it, it is a lot of good technology, cameras. We install cameras for customers that are in California. Some people, the kids are out of state, but that, you will have to just kidnap that to get him out of his house <laughs> of 50 years. Means that some families put cameras in the house, and if they are out of state, at least from the cell phone, they can see what's going on, you know, or, is that it's, a, it's, it's good on expensive technology in the hardware stores that families can use. And if you have a grandkid or someone who know a little bit about technology, you can have a smart house for under a thousand dollars. Is that spend some time there in the hardware stores and you will see what they have out there. Another new technology to end is the grout. Many people are very concerned about the grout getting dirty. Mm -hmm. Now they have synthetic grout. The synthetic grout do not allow motor mildew to stick. Mm -hmm. And as many of my customers, they clean themselves in the shower or they change the catheter and get a bit messy. Means that you can take the handheld shower and just clean everything and the grout is always clean. Means that this is uh, the latest in remodeling products out there that you guys can consider. Okay? No more questions? Okay. Thank you, Thank you guys for coming. I know it was a beautiful day to hear me here. I am very sorry. <laughs> but thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to make uh, a couple of comments. Um, uh, as uh, Luis was uh, talking, I wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of the long closet that we have here at the office, uh, which does include uh, some roll-in shower chairs and uh, amongst other equipment portable that we have ramps. available. Some portable, portable ramps. ramps. Uh, um, when in doubt, just call and check in with us to see what we have available. Our inventory is always changing depending on uh, you know what people are needing and uh, what what we have available. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention uh, for those of you who haven't heard of Project Freedom, uh, it's also a lift system um, that's uh, through the Masons uh, free uh, for those who qualify. Um, it's a freestanding unit and um, uh, it's a remote. It's got like an electric control. Um, but I wanted to make sure that everybody's aware that that does exist. If you want uh, more information or if you want a referral made to them. Uh, give us a call for that as well. That's just a room lift, though. It does yes. not leave the room. Yeah, it's an excellent, it's a, it's a excellent unit. Uh, the Mesos has been doing that. Uh, she okay. had the, I don't know the contact information, but it has been in many of my customers have the, the unit. Uh, it's, a, it's what is called a HY unit oh, yeah. that reach the whole room. It's a Thing, my cost for that unit is almost sixteen thousand dollars, and they—I I don't know if you return the unit when They'll you don't need it. They'll come and they come uh -huh. and take it down mm -hmm. when uh, when we don't uh, need it anymore. So it's not—it's not portable. It's not it is yeah. semi-permanent. Stay there and they remove it. It's a—it's a hospital quality unit that, like the one that I show you. It's just uh, they, it's loan, they loan you the unit. Yeah. And, and you, you do have paperwork you have to fill uh, out, uh -huh, and they'll yes. tell you if you qualify. But mm -hmm. if you do, within a week, it'll be in your uh -huh, house. Yes. Um, so, you know, it can get you anywhere in uh -huh. that room that it's set up. So it, it can get you out of the bed into a power uh -huh. chair to go mm -hmm. to another room. Yes. So it's... Uh, and, into a commode or mm -hmm. into... And I believe that Home Depot, I don't think Lowe's, but I think Home Depot have a ramp program. Lowe's has one too. They only do like 
one project a year, though. It's very limited because um, I did call them asking them about that. Mm -hmm. and it, <clears throat> they also have a like sort of a referral process, oh, okay. so someone needs to like refer a family to them for that project. Um, but there are other resources that are out there. Pardon my voice. Um, and I do have a, uh, a lot of more information in some of the papers that I have out by the door here about different resources. Um, there's always going to be a process. There's always going to be paperwork, and there's always going to be wait lists. And for some programs, that you know, funding uh, runs out very quickly. Um, so I'm not trying to be discouraging. I'm just trying to um, let you know that you know, realistically speaking, yeah, it isn't always super easy to get that funding, but it's not that it's not available. Um, sometimes it's, it's about being creative and uh, locating um, uh, organizations or charitable foundations that are willing to help out. And it may not be an entire funding grant that they would allow you. Sometimes uh, it's only a portion that they would be able to give you, but something's better than nothing. And I think a lot of times there's a lot of like union, like carpenters union and, and things like that that will be willing to donate their time to build a ramp if you'll buy the materials. And I know that Home Depot, at least the last time I called them, they have X amount of dollars a year that they give out to people who, who need it. And it's a certain time of year when they get those funds. So if you're on the ball and you call them at the right time, that may be available. So it may require a few phone calls, but to get the information and know when you have to submit paperwork so that you'll be one of the first in line to get whatever they have available. Any other questions about that in particular? <coughs> Thank you for joining us this evening. If you wouldn't mind taking the time to complete the purple sheets um, that uh, it's an evaluation just to let us know. Um, what you thought of the program this evening. We appreciate the feedback.